All right. Welcome to the Sales Manager's Guide to AI, Maximizing Conversion from Lead to Close. I'm going to take another minute or two and give some time for others to join. You should notice there's a poll that we just dropped into the chat. Have you integrated AI into your sales playbook? Go ahead and drop your answer into the poll. Are you still researching the best options, using one or two tools, or your early adopters, and you're all over it? Want to get a sense for where everyone is on the AI adoption curve? Go ahead and drop that answer to the poll in there. While we're waiting for others to join, a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, any questions that you have, go ahead and drop them in the Q&A tab. We'll take some of the questions as we go and save plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Yes, we are recording this and we'll send the recording out to everyone who registered. And we'll also send you the free ebook on AI for mastering lead handling and call management just for joining us today. So go ahead and drop your answer into that poll if you haven't already. Have you integrated AI into your sales playbook? I see someone drop their answer DD into the Q&A. You can go ahead and use the poll for that question. It sounds like DD is no, you're definitely not alone. That's why we're here to talk through integrating AI into your playbook from lead to close. All right. Thanks for answering the poll. We're going to close it here in just a second and let's get started. So AI is really the new standard in sales. Um, as you can see here, most of the people in the poll are really just researching the best options, just dipping their toes in the water. Um, the other half of the room has started it or is already all over it. We're starting to see more and more companies in the space implementing AI at every stage in the sales process. Why? Because it's having a massive impact and AI is just scratching the surface of the types of things it's able to do. Just this year at the foundation level with large language models, with diffusion models that um, are used in chat GPT, are used to generate the AI images I'm sure you're seeing all over social media now, um, have improved a ton. And the state of the art model has changed like six or seven times already this year, and it's going to change a bunch of times um, throughout the rest of the year. So to talk about how this impacts you, I want to actually bring on Sean Smith, the sales director, SMB and partnerships at EverConnect. I'm really excited to introduce you guys to Sean. For the last decade, Sean's worked on the EverConnect live business. So serving contractors across all home services verticals. Before joining EverConnect, he worked as an entrepreneur himself. So he knows what it takes to find and win new business, both over the phone and in person. So Sean, welcome. Tell us about EverConnect. Thanks, Joe. Um, there's a little bit of irony in there going from needing leads to working for a lead generation platform. Uh, such as EverConnect. So it's good to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I am on the live side of our business. We focus heavily on live exclusive phone leads. So a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio there. It's live inbound traffic, home service providers, gosh, probably 30 different service verticals now. Uh, but the one piece of it, you know, is generating the phone call, generating the lead, delivering that lead and that opportunity to the, to the business owner. 
Um, but the other piece of that is also making sure that we provide ample feedback to make sure that our clients are converting. So there is a little bit of coaching that comes along with this. Um, we do get that feedback based upon a summary that is generated off of that audio. So that's a fairly recent development. Uh, we used to have to do it the old fashioned way and just listen to every single phone call, word for word. Um, to one, determine billable status. And then two, uh, to also provide that customer feedback on call handling to make sure that they're kind of, not only just kind of playing by the rules of our platform, but also putting them in the best position to be able to convert on those opportunities. And we've been compiling this data for years, but just now it's a little bit more efficient and a little bit more streamlined. Uh, but a little feedback we've gotten over the years and some of the best practices, uh, one with a phone call, <laughs> make sure you answer it. If, uh, if you miss that call, there's a good chance that you're not getting them back on the line. So answering that phone call live in the moment will increase your capture rate. The second thing is you want to make sure you have the right people handling those inbound leads. Um, part of what will make you successful as a business, and particularly when you're working with lead generation platforms, is instilling confidence into that, that prospective buyer, right? So you want to make sure that you have a seller or a closer taking those inbound phone calls uh, and somebody that can speak intelligently to the service that you provide. Um, if that's not an option, if you're utilizing um, call centers or things of that nature, you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and make sure that they can have call scripting available to you uh, just to help and, and instill that confidence into that homeowner so they have you out. Make sure you're answering the phone professionally. Um, that goes without saying. However, I always tell my, my, my contractors like, Answer the phone like you're excited to hear from them. You know, it doesn't mean you're rah, 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 um, faking it, but they chose to call you or they're being delivered to you. So talk to them like, hey, we're here. We're here to help. And uh, like, you, like almost like it's an old friend, right? That will help them feel comfortable with you. It will make your transition into being able to talk about your service a lot easier. Because the whole idea behind this is, they don't know you. They don't. Maybe they don't even know your business. So you got to make sure that you project that they got the right person at the right time on the phone. You want to make sure that those calls are being properly qualified. So one, do they own the property? Always start there. You want to make sure you have the right decision maker on the phone. Two, you want to just make sure they're calling for the service in which you provide, right? So does it fit your scope of work? Ask those qualifying questions uh, based on your service. Three, you want to make sure that they are in your footprint. And four, most importantly, ask for the appointment. You miss 100% 100, 100 of the shots you don't take, right? So you want to make sure that you kind of follow those four you know, high-level guidelines. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, we do this very well. Um, after listening to thousands and thousands of phone calls over the years, there is still a lot of opportunity here. Um, you want to make sure you are interjecting pieces of, yes, we've been here for X amount of years, right? Or unfortunately, we see this all the time. You know, you want to drop in those little notes of confidence builders into those phone calls. That way, you have a higher probability of them agreeing to schedule that in-home appointment with you. Right. Um, yep. A couple other little pieces is when, when you're on the phone with a prospective you know, buyer, so to speak, you want to make sure you avoid um, giving any type of pricing. See a large percentage of people, as soon as they start discussing pricing, they just, they lose the sale or they lose the opportunity to get on site. Um, it's always best to just suggest the in-home appointment. Um, a lot of times it's easier to sell in the living room than it is over the phone, right? So make sure you avoid doing that. And I would also even get in the habit of keeping kind of detailed notes if you can on the conversation. This will help tee up your salesperson potentially as they enter the home, they might have a little background or a little idea of what they're walking into. And then also kind of another way to tee up your um, 
your salesperson as they're going into the home, if it is not the not the business owner, is you know, hey, we are sending Sean out. He's got ten years of experience. We look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Um, and then again, reiterate who you are at the end of the phone call as well. Um, depending upon where that customer is in their in their decision making process, who knows how many people they may have talked to. So, you know, you're answering professionally at the beginning, make sure you're teeing up your salesperson at the end of the call, but also reiterating your business name again one more time, just to make you a little bit that much more memorable. And often I feel like that might just be something simple that is missed, right? So a um, couple of the other key points we have is you want those phone calls answered live. A lot of times we see a lot of fall off if they're utilizing any type of IVR answering system. So like press one for an emergency, press two for Tom. Um, it's best that the customer just hears ringing right up until that it gets answered. Oh. Um, we, on our on my business with the utilization of AI and, and used to just be like transcribing. So you'd get a full transcription of that nine minute phone conversation and have to roll through it. Uh, here recently, it will summarize for us that phone call, which makes us a little bit more efficient in delivering feedback to our, our current client base. So if something's happening and we, we know that they're not converting or they're mishandling phone calls, the efficiency of this allows us to speed up that feedback, thus making them more um, able to convert on calls and fix problems, thus kind of saving that runoff money. Makes a ton of sense. And it, it sounds like where you guys, so again, wh where this fits in, we're talking about AI throughout the customer journey yep. from awareness to close. And wherever Connect fits in is really at the top of that funnel, both generating the leads and then helping you, A, like convert them to appointments and B, set up those appointments for success. You just talked about using AI specifically to speed up the feedback process for those guys and gals on the phones. Tell us why that feedback being timely, being fast is so critical. Right, so as a business owner at one point in time, you have so many phone calls coming in from all different places, right? Um, if you wanna know why Tiffany's converting higher than Sean is uh, on these, these phone calls, you know, you can go pull that data and that information, share that information, with you know Sean, who's maybe not as efficient or is is quite as uh, talented on the phone as as another employee might be, to get them to implement those processes, key phrases, things of that nature, and then that captures more opportunity for the business as a whole. And then obviously, the more opportunities you have, the more top end revenue. Totally makes sense. Absolutely. Um, and and tell us. You know what? What have you seen be the highest ROI, biggest value proposition that you know your customers have realized implementing this side of AI? You've given a ton of great, really tactical advice on how to do this well. Where have you seen kind of people get the biggest value from from using EverConnect and its AI? Well, just in in general, the biggest value that they're seeing is they're not wasting money on leads that don't convert. Right. So putting that into dollars and cents, you know, across 5,000 contractors is a little tough, but uh, we do see billable percentages falling in line, you know, across all the different service verticals now. Some of them had higher, you know, conversion rates just because of demand, right? Emergency situations, uh, uh, storm damage, things of that nature. Uh, we're starting to see set rates get higher with project based. Uh, bathroom remodeling, window replacement, roofing. Um, and it all just basically stems from being able to get that information from, you know, the, that audio into the contractor's hand or the business owner's hand as quickly as we can so that they can make those adaptations. That's great. And we, we've seen personally at Zero when we work with companies that use a setter closer model where the setter is a canvasser, like obviously we'll record those conversations mm -hmm. that the canvassers are having. And when they're, when the closer going into the home is equipped with that summary, with that transcript, with that recording, um, they're closing way more often um, because they're starting exactly where that setter left off as opposed to relying on some non-existent or frankly poor notes 
that were taken on the call. And the person's primary thought um, is, can I get this person set? Not, can I get them set up to close? Have you guys seen that as well with higher close rates post appointment set? Just based on word of mouth, um, unless we are actually directly plugged into their CRM, we don't necessarily always see the close rates. Sure. But um, the initial feedback is yes. Like any knowledge is power, right? So anything that we can give our contractors or our clients to arm their sales force with is, I don't know that you can put a price point on that. Awesome. So really appreciate you coming on telling us about uh, EverConnects AI. Obviously, guys, there's a ton of value there in A, converting and qualifying those leads to appointments and making sure those appointments actually close at the end of the day. And AI is playing a huge part in that for thousands of contractors out there right now. And sharing that information across the organization, so leads close, sharing the information with business owners so they can make better decisions faster and then sharing the feedback that those people on the phones need in order to perform better. Um, as we're moving on to the next part of the customer journey and how AI is impacting, I'd love to bring on Andrew, the co-founder at Structurally, uh, where he currently leads all sales for the company. Um, Andrew, Tell us a little bit about how you guys that structurally are using AI and where that fits in in the customer journey for the contractors listening. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I appreciate the, the intro. And my goal here is to hopefully provide some value to you guys and take away a couple of tidbits that you can actually uh, implement into your business here. So a uh, quick kind of lay of the land, what we're going to go through for the next 10 minutes or so is... I want to give you a quick background of Structurally so you just kind of know who we are, uh, what we do, give you a high-level overview of what we really we do, where we fit into your business, and then really touch on and spend the majority of the time on really two main problems that we see with our prospects and customers when we are talking uh, to them throughout the sales process. And then once they're a customer of ours, there are two really main things that, that we see stick out. So um, we have a bit of a, you know, started in the dorm room story. Myself and, and my business partner, Nate, started structurally right out of college. Um, so started at college. We were in an, an off-campus apartment at that point rather than a dorm room when we started it. Um, but started right out of school, went full time uh, and been doing it for, for eight years now. So obviously the landscape of AI and all things technology have changed drastically back then, back in 2016, when we started, um, chat bots were kind of all of the hype. And now we've made it all the way to open AI and LLMs and just a totally different world. Um, but we started out with the fundamental problem of just all salespeople struggle uh, with lead follow-up, lead qualification, and lead nurture. And that's really where we fit in. We actually started in residential real estate spent you know six or seven years there, captured that market and have since moved on to home improvement, which is our main focus now and has been for the last year or so. Uh, so it's a fun market to work in, um, candidly a little bit more fun than, than real estate. So we really enjoy it. Um, the high level of what we do, if I were to just put it into a sentence is we qualify your leads over call, text message and email using AI. So to put that a little bit more tangibly, there's really five areas that we can work your leads. And it's throughout the entire sales funnel or customer journey. The first is just net new leads. If you get a new lead from EverConnect, as an example. Uh, the second is old leads. The third is rehash. And then appointment confirmations in the fifth, which is kind of the same as, as new leads, obviously, but a little bit different, is what we call overflow leads. So that is either during business hours when you know, your team just can't keep up with the inbound leads that are coming in, we can step in and help there. It also means nights and weekends leads, which in most cases are just not being followed up with at all. So new leads, old leads, rehash, appointment confirmation, and overflow leads are kind of all the areas we can help. That obviously covers the majority of the customer journey, uh, but most often it's from net new lead uh, or old lead that's existing in your system to appointment set is really where we play. So an example of that, 
um, is you get a new lead from EverConnect, as an example. We're going to be there to respond to that lead right away, 24-7, 365, over text message, calling, and emailing. Our main goal is to obviously make sure that we're there to respond to that lead right away, 24-7, uh, so your team doesn't necessarily have to do that. Speed to lead and speed to response are both covered. Uh, then once that lead does respond, we want to have a quick qualifying conversation with that lead and get that lead to the point where we know they're a legitimate lead and they're worthy of talking to someone on your team or scheduling an appointment with your team so a field rep can go out to the home. Um, we want to have a really tangible handoff to your team, which can either happen via a live transfer phone call or through an actual appointment set. And then, you know, once the appointment is set, our friends at Ciro uh, kick in and, and they can uh, go along with that, that field rep into the home and make sure that uh, closing rate is, is as optimal as it possibly can be. So to touch on the, the two problems that we see with our prospects and customers, and we'll spend the most of our time here is the first is just inconsistencies with lead follow-up and nurture. And the second is the use of communication channels. Mainly, we want to be using all the communication channels at our disposal. That's going to provide you the optimal results. So if I were to summarize uh, kind of the inconsistencies with lead follow-up and nurture, the core issue is the customer journey is not systematized. It is human-led. Humans are awesome. Uh, but salespeople like myself forget to do things all the, day, all the time. I'm sure I'm forgetting to do a sales task today even. That is consistent. So the, the question that I would ask you and pose to you is, as a business right now, can you guarantee that every single lead in your funnel was immediately texted, called, and emailed? And then when that lead moves on to a rehash stage, like a post demo no sale use case, they're then automatically texted and called, say, 72 hours after they hit that stage in your CRM. And then once that lead sets an appointment, did they automatically get a call and, and text to confirm that appointment? And did that happen 100% of the time guaranteed? And our belief at Structurally is that's what every, every company should aspire to. That is going to provide you the optimal results. Obviously, that's where Structurally can help and Structurally can guarantee that all of that happens where all of the touch points throughout the entire sales funnel um, are automated, which means they cannot be missed like they do currently with humans. Humans have their place in the sales funnel, but making sure that all of those touch points across thousands of leads and dozens of touch points for each and every lead, that adds up and it's just too much for a human team that only scales so far. So in terms of solutions for how you can kind of systematize this currently, is you can do it within your CRM. You know, if we're talking about lead perfection, market sharp, I360, kind of the common CRMs, kind of the three big ones, I'll call them. Uh, if you will, you can do a lot of this stuff in your CRM. You can automate text messages and emails to go out. The problem is once that lead responds, it's on your call center team or someone on your team to manually follow up from there. So obviously the benefit to Structurally is not only are we systematizing that entire process, but we're also doing a lot of the work for your team where we're having that full qualifying conversation. We're handing off that lead to you either via a live transfer phone call or via an appointment set. So as an example, uh, one of our customers, uh, Pella Dallas-Fort Worth, how they use Structurally is a little bit different than the norm. I wouldn't say there's, there's a norm, every business is different, but how Pella works just to uh, put an actual customer to it is they give their call center team 20 minutes to contact that lead. The call center doesn't get a hold of that lead within 20 minutes, it goes over to Structurally automatically. If for old leads, those leads also go to us after 30 days if there's just no contact. Now, the leads going to structurally after 30 days of no contact is where the rubber really meets the road in my mind, because that's where you're getting into dozens and dozens of touch points with each and every lead. Multiply that by thousands of leads that you're getting new or existing in your system every month. And that's where it is just so much for a human team to keep track of and things get missed. And that's what Pella loves about uh, using us is it's systematized. It's guaranteed that every single lead is getting, you know, 44 touch points over three months with us. And there's further touch points after that, depending on kind of where they are, where they are in the funnel. Um, 
we do believe that humans have a place in all of this. It is not just AI is going to come in and, you know, dominate the world and it's black magic. Not at all. It's just about providing the systematization uh, throughout the sales funnel that then leads to the point where a human can kick in. We live transfer it over to a human. They take it over. They verify a couple additional things. You know, it's a two-legger, stuff like that. And then our friends from Ciro tag along um, at the appointment. So that field rep can have the highest rate of success there. The big thing here is this gives you the ability to scale without adding headcount. Now that is huge. Like we talk to customers all day and it's their question is, okay, we, we're getting ready to scale, but we just can't do it. Um, we give you, give you the ability to scale without adding headcount, which is huge. You can generate more leads. You can push more leads through the sales funnel. You'll have more touch points with each and every lead, which inherently is going to add uh, more revenue to the bottom line. So ultimately, you know, more appointments are going to be scheduled for new leads, more rehash leads are going to be brought back to the table, more appointments are going to be confirmed without a human doing that, and more leads, old leads are going to be revitalized. So when we get into the nuts and bolts of how this works, the CRM integration that we have is critical. Um, I would say it is critical for all of the software tools that you use to integrate with your CRM. Um, that is going to provide the optimal workflow for your team. Your CRM is like the core hub that your team is like the system of work that your team is using every day. So if your tools don't integrate with the CRM, it makes it really hard uh, to get buy-in from your team, which is critical and just have an optimal workflow. So with the CRM integration for us, what we're doing is we're setting this up once and you can't necessarily forget about it, but it's in place and you can make small tweaks uh, from there. So as an example for a rehash lead in your CRM, you can set that, you know, when the lead hits XYZ criteria, which means it was a post demo, no sale uh, for that lead, boom, that automatically triggers structurally to jump in, call that lead, text that lead, say, hey, uh, we were in your home a few days ago, haven't heard back from you after we uh, gave you a quote, you know, what's the status of that? Do you have questions, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously everything is automated and that's just going to produce the optimal workflow for your team. All right. So systemati systematization uh, of the customer journey is critical. Um, what is also critical is making sure that you're reaching out on the appropriate communication channels. If there's one tiny thing that you can take away from this webinar, it is very simply, you should add texting to your workflow and your lead follow-up workflow today. That is a relatively simple takeaway that uh, you can go implement today. Your CRMs probably have texting uh, and you can just go implement that. You don't need structurally to do that. Uh, obviously, we would love to have you at Structurally, but you don't necessarily need that. If you're not texting, you're missing a ton of contact points with your lead. Texting is critical. We've had a number of customers who double their contact rate with lead just simply by adding texting. Anyone under the age of 40, call it, uh, give or take a few years, is going to want to text. And those people, generally speaking, don't always answer their phone. Um, so texting is critical. What is even more critical is combining texting, calling, and emailing. Basically, you just want to reach out on all channels. This obviously maximizes the chance of connecting with that lead. It also gives that lead the optionality of how they want to communicate. Some people do want to get on that get on the phone, and that's awesome. Um, some people want to text. That's also awesome. You should just meet your lead where they are and give them the op optionality of how they want to communicate. So with structurally what this means, uh, combining texting, calling, and emailing is that lead is going to get 44 touches in the first three months. Again, combination of calls, text, and emails. So they're getting a lot of touch points on all the different channels uh, to hopefully maximize the chance that they do respond uh, to any of those communication points. A big thing uh, that we really push is calling and texting from the same phone number. That is critical, and it's kind of a sometimes overlooked thing. Uh, right now, you're most likely not texting and calling from the same phone number. Um, that creates issues because it might as well be a completely different uh, company that's reaching out to the lead at the same time because you're calling from this number, texting from that number. They don't always understand that that's the same company reaching out. 
if you're calling and texting from the same phone number, which is obviously what we promote, uh, you can text them first, say, hey, this is Andrew with Structurally. I saw you reached out about XYZ on our website. Just want to follow up and see how I could help. And then two minutes later, if you call them from the same phone number, it turns that cold call into a slightly warmer call. People are going to be much more likely to hand off. And then you can play off of those different communication channels when you do handoffs. What I mean by that is we're, if we're having a texting conversation with the lead, we want to live transfer that lead to your call center or your sales team so they can take it from there. Again, injecting the human touch into the sales funnel. We want to do that by calling them from the same number we were texting from. So we lead directly into a call from that text message and the number is consistent throughout. So we're calling from the same phone number that we're texting. So that is critical. That is another thing that uh, I would encourage you to implement as best you can. Uh, and, it, and it really works wonders for getting people to recognize that, hey, the number that's calling you is the same number that's texting you and it's the same company. So I wanna conclude with this, kind of a before and after structurally. Um, I think one of our customers, Armor Guard down in Jacksonville said it best and I always steal this from them. They say that you can have 10 call center reps and no structurally, or you can have three to four call center reps with structurally. So 10 call center reps, no structurally, or three to four call center reps with structurally. That just speaks to the ability to scale without adding headcount, which has been kind of their main takeaway of working with us. Um, the before is, you know, the call center has to do everything. They have to have every single touch point. Of course, some of that is automated, but only that first touch point. And once the lead responds, it's on that call center to manually respond from there versus just waiting for a live transfer to be sent their way with a qualified lead, which is key. So the call center is only working with a qualified lead. Uh, that is going to be a huge difference. And it really helps morale with a call center and just streamlines that whole process. So again, they go from working all of the leads versus having to only work the high quality leads that structurally is vetted for them. So they don't have to worry about the junk leads and talk to people who, if you do wet, only do wet spaces, they want a toilet re uh, redo. Or if they, for whatever reason, need a windshield replacement, which we see all the time, and you only do uh, windows, you don't have to deal with that and, and waste time on that. So um, again, main things that we want to hit on, if you haven't done implemented texting yet, implement texting. It'll be life-changing to kind of what you have going on in your business and optimize the contact rates. Call and text from the same phone number. Make sure you're reaching out on all of those communication channels and systematizing your entire customer journey is going to go a long way to ultimately at the end of the day, how much money goes into your pocket. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Andrew. I want to bring up Gavin in just a second, but super briefly, um, the concept of AI is pretty abstract. Yeah. And the idea of using it to interface directly with customers can be scary. So yeah. how do you go about actually implementing it for the first time? Yeah, the key is make sure that it works with your existing system. So to the CRM integration point, that's critical. If it doesn't work with your CRM, it's it makes it really hard to implement. I would say don't be scared off by the words AI. AI is everywhere and everything today. Instead of focusing on you know AI, focus on what that AI is actually doing for you. So in Structurally's case, we are making sure that all of your leads are followed up and qualified throughout the entire sales funnel. And ultimately structurally specific is, I know it sounds a little bit crazy that, you know, an AI assistant is going to be texting and even more strange potentially that they're going to be calling your lead. It's kind of one of those things where you just need to try it yourself. So if you're a little bit skeptical right now and want to try it yourself, you can just go to our website, structurally.com slash try and experience it. And once you experience it for yourself and you're like, oh crap, this voice is, is pretty good, sounds pretty human, uh, that goes a long way just to experience it for yourself. Awesome. So go ahead and hit that up once we get off structurally.com slash try. Appreciate it, Andrew. Um, at this point, I want to bring up Gavin, one of our account executives here at 
Ciro, I can't wait for you guys to, to talk with Gavin. He's a killer. Prior to joining Ciro, Gavin actually owned a pest control company for a year and was one of the top performing regional sales managers at Hawks Pest Control for two years. One of the reasons he joined Ciro is because in his last year at Hawks, Gavin and his team used it. And they were able to generate four and a half million in revenue and actually achieve a 38% higher revenue per rep average compared to the rest of the company. So Gavin, welcome to the stage. Tell us a little bit about how Ciro fits into the customer journey and how you've seen it impact. Yeah, Joe, excited to uh, have a conversation with you here. Um, yeah, guys, yeah, spent six years in in-home sales management. Um, and yeah, I've actually got the experience here recording myself and using it to coach my, my team and, and just a high level rundown for people who are not familiar. Basically, Ciro is a mobile application that records, transcribes, and then analyzes the conversations that are happening in the home to give you know your reps the ability to listen to themselves, the ability to listen to the best people, managers, the ability to coach, and then provide high level insight um, and you know where the team and individual reps can be focusing their efforts to get better. Um, and yeah, so so my plan today is you know to focus on what I actually struggled with in the five years up um, leading up to when I didn't you know didn't have Ciro those prior years and how I was able to actually use Ciro in my last year to resolve those problems. And I'll also be roping in some stories from some of my current customers um, that are now using Ciro in the home improvement space. Um, and so yeah, straight up to ride alongs just took too long. And my last year I was managing sixty two reps. I had three different offices. And the ability for me to not be able to go, um, you know, I'd have to go travel to actually get some in-person interactions with my, my reps the years before. And what that led to is I wasn't able to be everywhere at once. Even my managers only managing three to four guys in different offices, they weren't able to be everywhere at once. And so we truly just didn't understand what they were struggling with because the current status before Ciro is, hey, we do a ride along and maybe I get a few hours with you once every few weeks, once a month, once every few months. And then the other side of it is we do a role play. Well, there's two problems that show up with that. It's one, they're not the same when you're there with them on a ride along. And two, when they're doing a role play, that's just not a real customer interaction. And so you're not really getting the train on what your people are truly doing in the home. And so... Once I had Ciro, the beauty of it was I, I could be anywhere I wanted um, at any time. And what I was able to start realizing is we would have our you know, managers, myself included on Fridays, just fly through Ciro's. And with the, with the way the application set up, you can hone in on specific moments. You know, I want to train on the company story and I want to train on these three reps. Great. You select that, you build that playlist. And you can fly through 10 different examples of X rep doing the company story in 15 minutes. And you get a really good idea around what they're struggling with. Instead of, you know, you go to do a ride along, you maybe see three company stories and you probably forget what exactly went wrong by the end of it. You don't really get that coaching point. Um, one of my customers, Easy Baths down in Louisiana, Chris, if you get to see this, shout out, you're a, you're a beauty. Um, he told me, he goes, I'm probably listening to 10 to 15 times more interactions with my reps than I was prior. And he goes, the knowledge we've pulled from this is just, it's endless. And so, yeah, to recap that it's, you can do more ride alongs. You get to coach your reps on what truly happened and they get to be themselves in the home. And so you're coaching them on what they're truly doing. Um, the next side of this, and, and this was my team's favorite part. This is why my guys loved Ciro. I think one of the reasons I got brought to Ciro is like you have 62 guys and 62 record every day and they go crazy in the application. They're listening left to right. How are you like, why is that? Well, the situation is every single person listening to the call, you've got your guys at the top, you got your middle performers and your lower performers. And for a lower performer or middle performer to get with a high performer, they either have to do a role play, which again is not the same interaction, it's different, or they have to go do a ride along, which again is very time consuming. And it's, it, how much are they really gonna pull back? Maybe they wanted to re-listen. How do they overcome that objection? I forgot. Well, with Ciro, what you're able to do in what we call the posted section is you can get in and jump, You know, let's say Joe Jordan's the best rep in the company, and Joe is an absolute killer at overcoming it's too expensive. 
great. I'm, I'm going to go listen to Joe overcome too expensive 10 times and I'm going to learn a ton. And in between appointments, maybe I'm having a down week and, you know, I want to go listen to the top guy in between my appointments. Like click into Ciro. It's my new podcast. We see that happening with dozens of our customers. Reps are saying, I'm throwing out Joe Rogan and I'm listening to Ciro in between appointments and I'm learning something each time, applying it to the next, you know, conversation I'm in. And I'm closing way more deals. One of my customers, who's the number one listener um, last month in Ciro, and in 10 years as an HVAC technician, he just had his best month of sales. And he, you know, attributes that to Ciro. Um, and so that's the beauty of it. One of our customers, Pella, um, their reps listen into this all over the place. And what they've told me is they're actually having the guys listen to each other on their own time. And then they're coming into their team meetings and they're playing these great examples that the reps themselves have found in front of everybody. Hey guys, like I just found Joey here. You got to hear how he explains financing. It makes so much sense. Boom. They throw that up in the meeting. Everybody watches it together. They all learn. And so that's the other side of this without zero or, you know, recording your people in the field, it's really hard for them to understand what the best examples you know, sound like. And when you have zero, it's really easy for the guys in their own time to jump in and get better. And the reality of it is, is that's not every single person in your sales team, but there's a huge chunk that really want to go get after it and try and learn on their own. And you're empowering the people who want to get better in your company when you have something like zero and building a culture, that peer driven coaching culture um, that we're seeing customers using zero um, or having a great experience with. Um, and, you know, that last piece, without something like this, it's it's hard to have true visibility into what is going down across your entire team. You know, I, I, I didn't realize until having zero how much I didn't really know. You know, we, we'd come together. All right, guys, what are you struggling with? The team would throw things at us and we'd train on it. And what I realized is the guys don't really know what they're struggling with, with uh, very often. And so we looked at the data, we could hone in on, we'll track objection data within CRO. And we'd see, oh my gosh, we're dealing with, I need to think about it 20% more than any other objection. Let's dive into that in a team training, understand what we can do in the process prior to this to make sure that objection doesn't come up. And if it does, let's play 10 examples of what it sounds like when we smash that objection so we can all learn together and get better. Uh, there's other cool things we do there. We're going to track your process. Hey, these reps, they're forgetting this step. They're not bringing up the warranty at the right moment, things along those lines. And we'll also do all the speech analytics in the world. Um, that rep I mentioned earlier, um, he also, the, the one the HVAC technician who had his best month ever, he also realized he was the fastest talker in the entire company. He slowed down. He went right into the middle of the pack in that month as well. And he also believes, hey, I just slowed down and more people listened to me and they bought. Um, and so that's that's the beauty of having the visibility that you get from Ciro. You're, you're not just guessing anymore. You actually have true insight into where your people are struggling, who's actually really good at the things that the team's struggling with, and you're able to train everybody using that, um, using that data. And so, yeah, to recap, you know, right there, it's you can do more ride-alongs. Understand what your people are actually saying. Your reps can get in on their own time and in team trainings. Everyone can pull up examples and learn from the best on real live rounds, not just a role play. And then that last piece is you get that visibility. What are we doing? Where are we struggling? What are we doing right? And you're able to take these points and, you know, go in and coach your team up effectively. Um, Joe, before I go into like my my takeaway, my favorite one from, you know, what I saw using Ciro, um, any, any questions you want to add in right there uh, on those topics? No, we have questions starting to come in the chat. So please keep dropping those in. We'll get to those in just a second. But yeah, Gavin, I just love to hear that favorite story of where using Ciro's AI changed the game for you. Yeah. So yeah, I think two come to mind. Um, it's, you know, I remember having this conversation with one of my reps. Um, you don't realize how much is lost when you just talk after a ride along about what went down. We kind of already touched on this, but I'll use a specific example. You know, this rep really struggled with, I need to think about it and I need to talk to my wife. We ended up finding that out in zero. And before, the years before, I would just come out after I saw a rep struggle with that in a ride along and we talk about it. It's like, hey, you said this, here's what you should have said, here's what it sounds like. And I just realized we were just talking. Nothing was clicking. For these guys when, when when we were doing that the same way that it did 
when I had Ciro, we would review the recording together. And it's like, hey, did you just hear how the customer objected in this response that you had? We'd listen to that. Hey, here's an example of what it sounds like done right. Or let's role play what it sounds like done right. And the thing that started to really click was they could hear themselves back doing it the wrong way. And that's when the light bulb started firing. Um, one of my customers at Ciro now, um, Denver Patio uh, Masters, they, they've started playing back to their team how they're doing their discovery with the customer. You know, hey, asking, hey, what, you know, what type of design would you like? Asking all those questions. And they had always told their reps, you guys sound like robots. You're at a doctor's office. It sounds like 20 questions. And they've told their guys this before. But it wasn't able to click until they could actually have the recording and play it back. And the guys, they've just told me it's like light bulbs are firing off. Like, oh, my God, it sounds like I'm in a doctor's office getting quizzed right now if I'm the customer. And they've learned since then how to make it a much more personalized approach. And they're seeing that the customer's rapport is flying through the roof with them. There's trust in what they're saying. And it just really feels like, you know they're actually there to understand what the customer cares about getting done and they're supplying the right product and their closing rates are going through the roof. Awesome. Well, really appreciate the download on Ciro and uh, how it's impacted you personally and your customers, Gavin. Let's go to Q&A. So again, make sure you guys drop your questions in the Q&A section in the Q&A tab. Don't hold back. If we don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up. So to get the discussion going, we have one question in here from an anonymous attendee. What are the legal requirements of recording conversations in a customer's home? Gavin, you want to take that one? Yeah, totally. Um, so there are Basically, every the majority of the states in America are one-party consent states, and so you don't have to actually worry about that. Um, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. It's 39 one-party, 11 two-party consent. Um, the two-party consent uh, states would be Florida, California, and you know the list goes on. And we can share that over with you if you're curious. Um, but it's pretty simple. You know, one of my customers down in Florida, we're kicking off with them right now. What you can do is you can build into your inside sales team. So you know, appointment comes in, they book this over the phone. At the very end, hey, Mrs. Smith, I um, just want to let you know that we have all of our you know, sales reps record their conversations for quality and training purposes. I just want to make sure you're okay with that and get your consent over the phone right now. Cool. As long as a sales rep shows up and it's the same person that was connected over the phone, there's no need to actually go ask for the consent. But majority of our customers actually even go ahead and do this regardless um, because we're seeing customers love it. There's this new level of trust because they know you can't for lack of, letter, lack of better words, BS them. What's going down in the home right then and there um, is being recorded and it's protecting them. And what it looks like, it's the same thing. It's very simple. Hey, Ms. Smith, you know, inside sales team, they let you know, but I'm just going to be recording for quality and training purposes. That's all cool with you, right? Yep. And we move forward and we see in Ciro well over 95% of those um, consent requests are accepted. Awesome. Yep. And again, if you want to hear some real examples of people doing that in the home, when you reach out to us, we can play some of those. One of our account executives will meet with you and run down the full list of those two-party consent states. So again, don't see any more questions right now in the Q&A. So if you have something on your mind, again, don't hold back, throw it in the Q&A tab and uh, we will answer it. I have a question for the group now in the meantime. I'd love to hear from each of you guys in 30 seconds or less, your perspective on how as AI continues to improve, those improvements will show up in your part of the customer journey over time. Um, why don't we start with Andrew? Cool. Yeah, I'll focus on kind of the lead qualification side of things. I think it goes back to being able to scale without adding headcount. Uh, it's the ability to process more leads without, um, you know, adding people to be able to, to handle those leads and ultimately close more business. And it's more so at the top of the funnel, just filtering through which are the higher quality leads that should be passed off to a human and which are the low quality leads or junk leads that should just be completely ignored. Awesome. Great. Sean. 
Yeah, actually, so recently we have been able to port in those summaries into the client's dashboard or their portal that they're using. Um, and I'm hearing that they're kind of using it for, you know, performance evaluations, you know, mid-years, things of that nature. So um, that's a new uh, involvement from just within our company uh, over the last probably three weeks. I think we, we did that. So um, just being able to get that information to them as quick as possible. Fantastic. Gavin. Yeah. Um, so Ciro started off as, you know, more so of a recording tool that helps you guys get in and listen to recordings and coach your people up. It's becoming more and more of an AI coach. And so we've got a feature called Ask Ciro that is developing and getting stronger every single day. And you can ask the recording any question, you know, how well did the rep build rapport? And it will spit you back an answer that is very, very accurate and takes you to key moments when they did well, maybe if they struggled. And so now your reps and yourselves, without having to read a two hour long recording and listen to the whole thing, you can get a really, really strong answer within seconds. And that's just going to continue to get stronger and stronger. So we're getting more and more close to a full blown AI coach that is a co-pilot for all those sales managers out there. Awesome. Appreciate you guys sharing your perspective. Lots of exciting stuff coming. We have a question in from anonymous attendee. Pricing on structural leads based on the number of leads handled, is this counting only the leads that are validated as actual leads or all potential leads handled? I think that falls in your wheelhouse, Andrew. Yeah, that includes all leads that are enrolled into structurally. So if the lead has a bad fun, phone number, bad contact information, uh, they put in you know, a landline, we're only going to be able to call them. It's only leads that get enrolled into structurally. And that, that can include new leads, old leads, uh, et cetera. The caveat there is we only charge for each lead once. So you can have a new lead conversation with a lead, then an old lead, then rehash, and then appointment confirmation. You'll just be charged once. Sweet. Awesome. So we have another question in the chat. Please use the, the, the Q&A if you can. I know there's like a separate tab for Q&A separate from the chat, but we have one in from Rob Lincoln. What's the best way to roll this out to the team? Do you have something for handling objections? So for this one, I'll start with you, Gavin. What have you seen? Yeah, so with Ciro, um, first of all, it, this needs to be framed as a... It's almost like a, a group project where, hey, we're all recording to understand where our you know, struggles are and what we're doing well. But the first month, extremely positive. Um, we, we recommend all of our customers, you don't really coach anyone negative unless they ask for it that first month. And it's strictly just reinforcing good habits because then your reps don't feel like you're just recording them to micromanage them. And that's never going to, you know, that's never going to work out. We also assist with the rollout, our customer success team. We're masters of it. This masters of this at that point. At this point, apologies. Um, where we we know to really get your team excited about this. Um, and I believe we're at like thirty something customers in a row where we're at full adoption within a month. Um, so we'll assist you in these objections. There's different ones that show up in different situations, but we're getting pretty dang good at you know how we frame this to the team and we work with you guys to set that up. What are their concerns going to be? And we tackle those with you. Um, so there's not a one size, you know, fits all approach here, but we've pretty much seen all the questions in the world. Now we'll be able to handle those objections as they come up with you. Sweet. Thanks, Gavin. Sean, do you want to jump in with your perspective on this? Yeah. So since it's top of funnel, a lot of times the objection is <laughs> before they can even get to the property. So we can go back in and kind of diagnose, hey, was it the tone uh, of the sales rep on the phone or something that they said, you know, a lot of the best practices we've come up with, like, don't give any pricing over the phone. Like it all stems from taking that information that we were able to gather um, at the initial contact point um, to come up with a set, set, you know, SOPs of like things not to do to screw up the phone call. And we, we hand that off actually um, during onboarding to our, to our clients. So overcoming the ejection on the front end is typically uh, either the person's not knowledgeable enough or they get a little too far into the weeds and start discussing pricing and things of that nature. So that's that's really what we've been able to use it for. So that that's great stuff on how to handle like the objection from the customer live. I think 
Um, what Rob is particularly interested in is in getting buy-in from the team to adopt something like EverConnect and any objections that might come up in the adoption process. It might be, hey, we don't really get any. The implementation is super easy, but love to hear your thoughts on on that specifically, Sean. Uh, usually with buy-in, it, it just boils with, with salespeople. Like they want more leads. So we don't really deal with a whole lot of the objection piece of it. It's more like, hey, like, is my phone going to ring? You know, like that that's the biggest piece of the puzzle. Like, am I going to have at bats? Am I going to be able to get, am I going to be able to get to the property with these leads? You know, so yeah. it's where you can pull the data and say, Hey, look, we send you hundred phone calls. 40 of them are going to be set. So. Yeah. I can't imagine most salespeople would have a problem with you sending them more leads. Right. <laughs> um, awesome. Andrew. Yeah, so we're primarily dealing with a couple of different parties when we're selling, generally like CEO, owner type, and then a call center manager or ops manager. Um, those folks have different um, different objections. I'll focus on the call center manager one, kind of speak to that. Their concern and the call center rep specifically are concerned that Structurally is going to come in and take their job. They see AI, they overreact, they're like, oh crap, AI is going to be the call center moving forward. Um, that is not our approach. Um, we think that you don't need to hire additional call center reps, but we just want you to be able to scale with the existing team that you have. And it's ultimately just getting them comfortable uh, with that. We're not there to steal your jobs. We're there to make your job easier, allow you to close more deals, hopefully make more commission if you're a uh, commissioned rep. And that usually gets them on board. Sweet. And I think, yeah, in, in, in particular with uh, Structurally and with Ciro, it's one of those things where the best way at the end of the day to overcome those objections is to get it in people's hands. I think once people experience it, um, they understand where the value comes from. I think we have time for one more question. So first come, first serve, first question to come in in the next minute or so will be the question we answer. Going once, going twice, going thrice. All right, looks like those are all the questions that we have. Um, we are launching an attendee survey right now. So please be sure to answer the two quick questions, just two quick questions to let us know what you thought of the event and if you'd like to learn more. We read every response and to sweeten the deal, if you fill out the entire survey and just two questions, we'll enter you to win a pair of custom Ciro Nike shoes. They are awesome. They're like $200 retail and we will email the winner. As a reminder, everyone will get the free ebook just for joining us today. We'll email that with the recording. Special thanks to EverConnect and Structurally for putting that ebook together and for joining us. That concludes the event. Again, make sure you answer those two quick questions in that attendee survey for a chance uh, for uh, for a pair of those custom Ciro Nikes. Just two questions, pair of Nikes. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the event.